The Cowboys finally paid Dak Prescott his money, which I love because I'm all about players getting paid. Um, you have to you have to dictate your worth a lot of the times, you know what I'm saying, more so than others, especially in sports, you have to dictate your worth. And, and at the quarterback position, you definitely have to dictate and demand your worth. He stood his ground and he finally got it to the tune of four years, $160 million. Now, granted, you see this, you see what's on my hat right here. So I really don't give a damn, but they use up a lot of cap room. So I'm actually gal- glad about that. Uh, but uh, what do you, what do you think? Do you know, now that this thing is all short up, do the Cowboys make the playoffs this season? Oh, yeah. Um, they should, <laughs> especially if that Prescott is getting the kind of money that he's getting. Um, you talk about a $160 million deal, $122 million guaranteed. I believe $40 million in annual salary, which puts him ahead of Deshaun Watson and just slightly below Patrick Mahomes. You got to pay, you got to play like a Patrick Mahomes. You have to make the playoffs. And I think in the NFC East, we all know how terrible that division is over the years historically. Everybody look at last year. Yes, last year was terrible, but it's always been like that. You know, it always came down to week 17 while everything else is pretty much seated and we know who's going to play. We have to wait till Sunday night football to find out what's going to be with the NFC East. And that's just what it is. So I think that they have, they should be able with that talent to be able to come out of the NFC East. I think that Dak Prescott, is a top 10 quarterback. He's not a top five quarterback. He's not a, a nine or 10. I, I believe he's a nine or 10 quarterback, but I just look at the Cowboys and I say, why now? You know, why didn't you just do this two years ago when you could have got him for cheaper? Because each year that goes by the quarterback market raises up because that's just how the league is trending towards. So now you basically could have saved yourself more money by, you know, signing him to that long, long term deal you know, two years ago, my mama always tells me, she like, son, always economize your economic resources. Translation, if you can get it for cheap, you get it for cheap. And the Cowboys could have got it for much cheaper than what they got it for now. So going forward, maybe the next two years, they they have to drive well. They have to get some of that interior defense patched up. They have to add some depth on that offensive line. They have to patch up that secondary, of course. And they're going to be able to do that to a certain extent during the draft. I like the hire of Dan Quinn, but as far as when Dax Dale gets more expensive each year that goes by, and you got Ezekiel Elliott over there that's paid, you got Maury Cooper over there that's paid, a lot of guys that's paid, oh. I think there's going to be some trouble for the Cowboys going forward. So they right now they're in win now mode, and I don't even think they got the whole win now mode team. So, you know, at least they got their quarterback. So there's goods and bads in every situation. And in this situation, the good is that you got your quarterback for the future. And this is, as we all know, a quarterback driven league. No, that's that's a that's a fact. Um, they, they definitely, you know, waited a long time. They could have got this deal done for cheaper um, if they had done it a little while ago. Um, I will say this, though, and I've said this before on the show, you know, Dak, you, st- you, you, you stood there. You know, during the whole, you know, during the protests and whatnot, and you stood with that man Jerry Jones, and look how long it took for him to to, to pay you your money, and he paid it because he had to, not because he wanted to. So I want you, I want that to be a lesson to Dak moving forward. You know what I'm saying, and, and just to to players in general moving forward. You know, this is a business for these owners. Yeah, it sounds good. They love you. They care about you when everything is up. But as soon as as things go bad, they will get rid of your ass. And that will be the end of it. Um, you know, really quick and keeping it within the division. Um, Alex Smith was released uh, by the Washington football team. You know, we, we all know what he went through with those injuries. He, he was comeback player of the year, but he is looking for a new home. I think he can get picked up somewhere um, to be a backup. I just don't know where at this point. I'm still a little bit nervous. Every time I see Alex Smith get on the field, I cringe, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel bad, you know, seeing that injury and everything he had to deal with after that, I, I you know, I, I felt really bad. So, you know, listen, I'm, I, I, I encourage him. I hope he can, can get back, get on another team and, and continue to play football. Um, but I just, you know, it's just still a little bit uh, cringe worthy for me, you know, when, um, when, uh, when I see him on the field. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk.
dope, we as real as you thought. Real 